So welcome back to the channel and here we are with the second build of the new series for armor building. So we're still um, taking things at a kind of basic level here and another classic kit uh, that's easily found and, and does get picked up quite often. It's another hobby craft kit, it's, it's always for sale. So we've got rubber band tracks, a uh, few sprues and the whole tub there as well. Um, typical stuff. This one is again from the 70s which is uh, it's surprising how well it holds up and as you can see there's a lot more wheels on this one than the um, Panzer II so I think we've got uh, eight wheels each side so 16 wheels all together and then we've got the sprocket and idler so just getting those out I'm using some uh, jewelry clippers there uh, I've done a video on the channel I'll have a link in the description on what these are because people often ask they're quite useful but they're not necessary they're not something I'd recommend um, any sprue cutter would be fine here. I just like these flat-ended ones because I can get close to the part. With tanks that have lots of wheels, I like to get those started first, really. Um, uh, so that was the road wheels. These are the idlers. I'm just showing here that there's a bit of flash on the uh, spokes there. So it does. it, it is worth getting rid of that because it, it adds to the refinement. All of these little bits and bobs that we do does actually add quite a bit to the finished uh, model so it's worth worth having a go at and uh, what we can do here is um, use a bit of Tamiya extra fin once we scrape that back with a sharp knife and that will just get rid of any loose bits of plastic and, and smooth it off so that's what I've done there and it, it looks pretty good so then we've got the polycap system again which is a Tamiya thing so just put that in there you don't need to glue it in there and then it's clamped together with this second part and you just want to line that up as you can see and get it out of alignment you want the spokes to be um, in line like that so just sight that in by eye that's the best way to do it and then on to the sprocket and what we've got here I'm just showing you one side I've cleaned it up and the other side I haven't uh, and there's there's a, just a little bit of flash here and there you won't get this in newer kits, uh, certainly from Tamiya, uh, but the older ones do have a little bit here and there. I'm just cutting out the tiny bit of flash in the locating um, hole there uh, and just scraping around a little bit. And that's all you've got to do. In, in between the uh, teeth as well, there's a mould line. You could leave it there if you, if you weren't bothered. It's not, it's not important. You don't really see it on the finished model, but I like to try and get rid of those. Um, because I don't like them showing up in uh, at the end of the build. So just taking off the sprue uh, gates there as well, the bits of sprue that are left from where we took it off the, the actual sprue. Um, and then using these flat anvil type uh, cutters, you can get in quite close as well. And then it's sanding sticks. So we've got some new tools in this one. So sanding sticks as well, like I mentioned at the start. I'm starting to use them now. Um, if you want to, if you don't have them and you want to get into it, uh, I would imagine just getting the starter set from flooringmodels.co.uk is a great way to start. That's my preferred uh, type of sanding stick and you get everything you need in there. Generally, you buy one pack from them and um, you don't need very many more for a little while. Now you can see we're taking out the mould seam from the sprocket and once that's done, just run in there again with some uh, Tamiya Extra Fin. Uh, just to smooth that all out and get rid of any of the plastic that's uh, left. And this is uh, being very light with the Tamiya Extra Fin, we're not pouring loads in there. And then after that it is again a polycap system and we just clamp that together um, and using these small clamps, again you can pick these up anywhere, they're pretty cheap um, and very useful. And that just pushes it down enough to hold it there and then using that Tamiya Extra Fin again that will bind it all together and then you can sort of push it as well once you've applied the Tamiya Extra Fin and you'll find that it'll just kind of melt in and around and give you a good join. That's those two sorted. And then uh, there's one more job left and that is the road wheels. So each road wheel has a polycap. We've got 16 road wheels there and it looks daunting but it's pretty simple. You just get the uh, you get the fronts and the backs sorted. Well, get the polycaps out of the way. I've mixed them all together here. Um, 
And when you've got the back, you get the poly cap, slide it in the back, get the front, glue it in like that, and then give it a twist. So I run Tammy Extra Fin in there and then just give it a twist. As you see here, just use capillary action, just a dab, one twist, and that will hold it. And then go on like that. And then once they're sorted, uh, you're able to sand them flush once they're together. And it's the easiest way to do it. And there we go, we've got them all, all um, together now. And it's not as much as you can see. And here it shows you the Flory uh, model sander as well. This has got a green center, which means it's the sort of medium sander. It's kind of the one you reach for the most. I don't know what the grit would be, but it, it's just the right kind of grit. You're just going around sort of in a circular motion, just kind of hitting it a little bit, as you can see. And make sure that line's gone, because there's a mold line there as well as a sprue nib. And uh, once that's uh, sorted, we go in with these sanding sponges. So this is the Infinity sanding sponge. I've done a review of these on, on the channel as well, so I'll pop that in the description. Um, they're excellent. I, I use them for, on every single model. There is there is nothing better than the Infinity sanding sponge. So you can't get higher praise than that. And there we go, sanded back and smoothed. So it's usually quite good as well if you're new to things is to is to tick stuff off on the instructions so you can work out where you are. So now we're on to the rear hole um, plate as well. So it's so the, the, the back of the hole. Um, and I like to get all of these parts off, so that's the muffler and everything else that's in that stage of the instructions, especially if they don't look the same. Uh, I like to get them all off and clean it all up so it's ready to go and we can just assemble it all in, in one, one go at the end. So with the muffler, that is obviously a, a cylinder, so we want to get that together. I've got the sprue nibs there, I'm leaving them on um, and just putting extra fin down there on both sides of the join and then forcing that together with clamps and holding it uh, so that we get a nice weld bead of melted plastic coming out through and then we can sand that back it acts as a filler and then we get rid of the seam with that bit of force now the the join kind of disappears and then we get a, a bead of melted plastic coming out through it and it's a very useful uh, way to go about it and then you can sand that all back through when it's dry and you'll find that the seam will be mostly gone. If you've got any gaps at the minute, you know, you can uh, touch it up as well. Back with the trusty clamps as well, just to hold that there and firm it up and make sure it doesn't come apart. Just using tweezers there, just to make sure that actual exhaust pipe there is joined, but it is, it's pretty good. So this is the rear hole plate, and we've got a few small details that we're gonna to add to that. And then we place that in there as well. I'm not sure what that bit is, but that's where it goes and that's the way it faces. And we've got a few small details to go on the back there and I just apply them in the same manner um, with tweezers, putting in some of the green extra fin so it doesn't evaporate too quick and then just placing the part in. And once that's done, you can see all the parts there where they need to be and it all looks uh, pretty good. We've got a muffler to go on the back there as well, uh, which kind of sits in those two cradles. Uh, but we're leaving that separate because it's going to be a different colour. And now attaching the rear plate of the hole. Uh, I actually don't get this bang on perfect, I notice, as we go through the build. Um, and what I've done here is aligned it at the bottom. Whereas actually what you want to do is align it at the top and make sure it's level at the top because I've got it out. It's, it's not actually totally level at the top. So when I join the top hole on, you don't actually see this. They are, it, 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 I don't know what I'm doing basically, but I've, I've put the focus on the bottom of the hole there where I'm, I'm gluing. And what you want to do is line it up at the top. So make sure the two sides of the hole um, are level across the top. Then we've just got the return rollers to do, which is simple enough. It's just the uh, one part with the peg and then you put the other wheel on the back of that again give it a twist and sand it when it's together and they can go straight on to the hole because they're going to be metal color we don't need to leave them off for painting and then we've got the uh, sprocket arms as well there's a little bit of movement there so uh, when you put this gear housing on um, you want to get that level at the top 
even though there's a bit of a gap either side, just, just make sure it's level again for when the top of the hole joins in. And then uh, using a closed peg as well, just to make sure they clamp on in the right place. Once they're level, uh, just use that to hold it onto the sidewall. Then we've got the suspension um, arms and the uh, for the road wheels. We level that up using a steel ruler, and that's what you want. You you want to be able to put a steel ruler along, and each uh, arm where the road wheel is going to go wants to be sat there level on that. Quite a simple thing to do, and you check it there. You wouldn't check it along the bottom. Check it where the actual road wheels are going to be. And I just noticed one bit is slightly out, not touching. And this is how you ensure that your road wheels, when you put the tank down, are all touching the floor because tanks are heavy and all the wheels should be definitely touching the floor. Uh, we've also got a hole there in the side wall. And that is from the old school, as you can see on the inside, that there's parts that go in there. That used to be a battery motor pack because they were workable. So we do go about filling that. So using some wire cutters and a, and a spare bit of sprue, I just kind of get a, an, an angled end on it, cut it down to a point, just so I can wedge it in there a little bit. And then when we plaster that with Tammy or Extra Thin, it will melt it around and give you a good join. And then you just cut it off and you can sand it flush. I'm just flooding that now with the Extra Thin. You need quite a lot of it. It does need to be flooded to give the effect because we want to melt that sprue into the hole and blend it all around. Just forcing it in and then when that's where you want it and you've got a nice weld bead around it uh, then we leave that we can sand it up afterwards now i noticed this as an afterthought and it probably would have been better not to put the uh, road wheel arms on that side so you can sand it flush it's probably better to do this before attaching the road wheels and once that's all sorted you can then snip it off with some wire cutters and then sand it flush so using you know quite a good grit you want, to, you want to get through it and level it off. And then once that's um, sanded back roughly, you'll find that it'll, it'll still be a little bit un, uneven. So with some super glue, just put a dab of that across and that will level it off and uh, smooth it out. Again, you don't need to do this, especially on this one, because it's got sky, side skirts. So you won't actually see this, but it's just from the principles of um, modelling that you know you want to try and fix things where you can so you start with it all being smooth how it should be but if this looks like too much hassle you could actually leave this on this model um, but if you're doing an exposed running gear uh, type of Panzer IV that doesn't have side skirts well then you might want to think about um, doing it then and then when the super glue is dry we've got quite a heavier file just to go through that and level it down and then we sand that smooth and come back through with uh, different lighter grades of sanding stick uh, to get the scratches out of the plastic. Once that's all sorted we can move around the rest of the lower part of the hole and get it all finished. So at the front we've got these uh, hooks that need to go in there um, and they're pretty straightforward. You just push them up and make sure that the pin is facing outwards so that the corner of the pin is to the outside. And you just want to make sure they're nice and level and straight across the top and then glue them in. Then we've got the spare track bar as well and that just goes slightly underneath there. Just kind of joins into the bottom of those two, uh, two, two parts there. Now this is a bit of a tricky fit. You need to use enough glue to hold it there while you're trying to place it. As you can see it falls off if you don't. <laughs> but... Uh, just keep trying and, and you'll get there. It, it does hold on. You just need to get it tacky enough that it'll stay there and then... Perhaps if I turn that around uh, and use gravity to help me, it might have made life a bit easier. And then once it's on, just a bit more of a quick setting extra thin. And that should bring everything into line. Then we're on to the two-piece gun barrel. So you get this in older kits and... It's not an issue. Uh, people, armor modeling tends to, people tend to worry about seam lines, but when you're coming from aircraft, I mean, this is a joy when you compare it to a fuselage seam. So all you've got to do, again, is use the uh, technique of the extra fin, putting enough in there so you get a bead of plastic coming out, and then you sand it back. I'm just making the point that the end there is meant to be uneven, because that's how it joins. It's meant to have a bit that comes out a bit further 
it just looks like it shouldn't. So uh, from the muzzle brake, we actually just use a peg to level that up and get it joined where we want it to be. So once it's in the peg, you can kind of maneuver it. And then you run your extra fin down. So we're joining up the back. We're, we're holding the front so that we can join up the back end. But we need to, <laughs> we, need, we need to clamp the front so we've got something to hold on to. And then you see you get it out of the peg and then you can glue up the muzzle brake. It's just a, it's, it's a way of doing that. Otherwise you, you might get the extra fin running all the way around your um wet under your fingers and then you get fingerprints in there which can be a bit of a pain so there we go plenty of glue in there that should be enough to hold it now i'm just pressing that down firm so we get that bead of glue and uh, melted plastic and then you just want to use the actual hole of the of the gun at the end of the muzzle brake and just level that up and make sure that's in line and then just glue up the rest of it and if you clamp that all together and um, make sure it holds up over well overnight this would be a good thing to do at the end of your, your session so it's got all night to to glue up then you'll know that as you come back you'll be able to sand it smooth you can see the amount of clamps that I've used here it's just using the old trusty clothes pegs and I've got three of them on there and then I leave that overnight and it was absolutely fine the next day sanded it back and um, it was extremely smooth and even uh, if you really want to check, the only way you'll find out is if you look at it under paint. Um, and there you can see that's that's what we have the next day. And then that's what we sand through uh, using the various grades of sanding sticks. So starting with a coarse one just to get it down and level. Again, you don't want to you don't want to be too hard. You just want to lightly get rid of that line uh, because otherwise you could get flat spots. We want to keep it smooth and rounded. So that's one going round in circles there. Um, and you can see where the, the line is gone, so you leave that, you don't sand that anymore, and then you just move on down until that kind of white line, that's where the sanding, sanded plastic's building up against the ridge of the next line. Once that's gone, you can be pretty confident that there is no line there at the minute, and then you can go through with the various different grits to bring that up and smooth it off. And you kind of buff it down and then you'll find that it will, the plastic will go really smooth and the line the uh, seam line will have uh, vanished and like i said if you really want to check just spray a bit of uh, acrylic paint on there and if you can see the line under that then you need a little bit more work to do and you can go back with a bit of super glue uh, if you can't see the line uh, you are good to go and then we've just got the gut part of the gun breech or the mantlet and we've got some prominent ejector pins on the back there which uh, just fill again with super glue it's the easiest way to go about this because it's quick and it's easy and it's it, there's there's no sort it's not a high um handle it, you're not handling it a lot and you're not going to mess about with it so it's very easy for super glue to be used and there's no problem so just getting rid of these uh, heavy sprue nibs on the edge of the fender there because this top hole is one piece uh, so we just want to go around that and sand it up and we've got the rear uh, fender that glues in as well which isn't quite level so you've got to you've got to kind of push it up there I've used super glue to to bring it into level and then the term your extra fin to actually glue it and give it a bit more strength. otherwise the rear of the fender is not in line with the, the front fender where you join it and it's still a little bit out there but you can sand that smooth so there's the rear of the mantlet where we've sanded down the uh, ejector pins and we've just got a kind of canvas cover to go on there as well. It's pretty effective. And then the gun breech goes in there as well and I'm just using clamps to make sure that all stays where it needs to be. A little bit tricky because there's not enough for the clamps to hold on to but we get there in the end. And then that part gets uh, can be glued in um, and left movable. However, I actually just selected where I wanted it to be and glued it because it doesn't seem to, it seems to move a bit too much. I didn't like the look of it. So when we get the gun barrel in, I do uh, glue that up and leave it in because I, I don't want it to be workable. Uh, but you can do, and it'll move like that. 
but it, it was sort of off center a little bit and it, it was all a bit I don't know I just didn't like it I don't tend to like movable stuff in, in models because it you, you tend to want to move it and then you can break things so there's the gun barrel in as you can see how much traverse it's got uh, but you can sort of move it and lift it out of line which uh, which I didn't like so that's why I just glued that up once I got it in in the line where I want it then um, it's it's a simple case of adding all of these parts onto the upper hole now uh, we've got the spare spare wheel um, kind of cradle there we get two spare wheels go in there and I'm using a bit of metal rod because it's a lot better than the piece of plastic which had seam lines so I've put that together and as you can see you can just bend, bend the sort of spare wheel in and underneath so that was quite useful but the rest of it's straight out of the kit starting to glue bits on I've got the cupola on and I've decided to close the door down and not use the figure and uh, we're going to have the periscopes looking out and gluing in the loaders doors there as well which uh, you just need to place them in and then run a bit of glue around uh, they do fit quite well but it's not a seamless fit so you've got to put a bit of effort in there just to get them to level up but it's no no issue and then we've got all the other small parts going on so you've got periscopes there at the front so you've got two of those um, and this is an enjoyable part because once you've got all that cleaned up it's it's really easy just to then run on through and get this all sorted and um, it shows quite quickly when, once all the parts are on everything looks pretty good and then a few other small parts there all straightforward following the instructions and then we've just got these little hooks to go on the side here these are uh, lifting hooks I think and there's no real way to to place them other than using the instructions and reference um, and they go kind of just there you just sight it in by eye really it's a very small part one of the smallest parts on the uh, on the model and then we've got uh, putting on the rest of the tools so again just a little sped up video just showing you where they go so you've got some grab hooks go on there which is a bit tricky can be a bit awkward bit of fiddling about with that but once it's on it's okay and then it's just a case of uh, adding everything else around the rest of the model so we've got the fire extinguisher there again a little bit tricky it was getting sort of caught under some of the holes weren't quite weren't quite open as much as they should be but all fine once it's it's uh, close enough sort of comes in all right and once you start to get these extra tools on it does uh, it does Give the model a bit of a lift then starts to come alive and you can see you're um approaching approaching the end there and now just adding in the jack um and we li we do glue the tools on here because it's simple enough to paint them once they're on and some of them like the big jack block uh, the big jack for instance uh all stay the same whole color really so i mean you don't have to paint all of it um some of the tools you can see in the reference just get sprayed straight over and you can imagine doing that, you know, in the field, you wouldn't necessarily take everything off. It wouldn't matter if your axe has got yellow paint on it. I'm not sure you'd really care about that. But it does, it gives a bit of a, it breaks it up if you actually do paint them. And then we've got the start of the side shields. So a little bit extra I've done here is um, sanded them back and then cut them off. So sanded down some ejector pin marks and then cut the... Uh, side skirts into separate bits so they get a bit more realistic how they hang as opposed to being in one sheet like they are when they they come with the kit so i've got all of the brackets that go with them and the uh handles and we've glued the brackets on there on one side so we're going to show you how we did that on this side so you just glue the brackets on they go in those holes and then the the bottom part of it just kind of rests against the side of the tank uh, so you glue that in when, you, when you're there and you just want to make sure they, uh, the top and the bottom bit joins in um, nicely with a good join and then they point out directly, they're not kind of off to one side or anything so they just want to be at a right angle. Then when that's sorted we get the large bracket that goes on which has got some uh, locating areas and then you just clamp those in so you work from the front or the back in and uh, just glue up one 
This is all before it's all completely dried. So you, you glue one up in the right place. As you can see, it's a little bit awkward. So I'm just using the slower setting extra thin there. So at least there's something to bind it in when we get it in the right place. And you just line it up and then clamp it in each one. Make sure it's level and again at a right angle to the side of the tank. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's simple enough to do. And then you can just work them, as you can see, into being on a right angle and then move it around. And uh, you'll, you'll get there with a little bit of trial and error. Then when it's um, all set up and looks like the other side, uh, you're ready to go. And you can just trial it and make sure it's all in line by using one of the side skirts that we've done. There you can go. It, uh, it fits into where it needs to be. Then uh, onto the side skirts, you can see where I've just used super glue to fill those uh, ejector pin marks. And we've got those raised um, kind of circles there for where the handles go. Now I just sand through all of this using heavy grit sanding sticks. And uh, if you're on the floury range, this is the blue core I've used and it's the coarse side. Uh, and it is very, very coarse. As you can see, it, it, it obliterates it. So you just go all the way through, um, leveling it all off, getting it all nice and smooth. And once you're through the majority of that, uh, you can then check the ejector pin marks. And if you see a bit of uh, white in there like that, that means that there's a little bit that hasn't filled. Um, now, that's a little bit too much. I like to spread that around because that would take a while to dry. Whereas if you spread it around and activate it, it's a lot thinner, it's a lot easier to sand and it dries a lot quicker and it kind of self levels and then you just sand that back and smooth it off. Once that is done, um, on the other side, you still got the quite heavy panel line. So you can then cut down through that and using, um, once you've got through it with the knife, the best way to get a, a good a tight edge is just to snap it off and then you just sand that edge a little bit with a sanding stick. And once those bits are all sanded, uh, all cut apart, sorry, uh, you just turn them over and with your extra fin, you just place in each of the handles and the uh, hooks that go for the mounting on the side of the side skirt. So these go over the, the triangles and the, the hooks that stick out. And it's all quite straightforward stuff. It's only the front and the back that have a different it's actually only the front one that has a different setup. All the rest are using the same parts. It's just quite simple to get through there. As you can see, once it's all lined up, that's one done. And you just want to make sure it's, it's again, all at right angles. And you'll um, be sure that it all lines up when you get it onto the model. Here we go, just with a test fit. So the upper hole is dry fitted to the lower hole so that we can just have a look at the side skirts and see what they look like. And they just slot on, as you can see, you've got the, the two handles at the top go over those triangle areas. And then the one on the inside goes over a hook on the side of the hole and they slot in nicely and it's it looks so much more realistic having them like this and you can even then um, add a bit of kind of damage like they've come off uh, whilst the vehicle's being used and you can take one off you can spray one a different colour and it really then starts to look like the Stug when you've got them on both sides it's, it's the iconic look uh, the Schwarzen or the side skirts on these type of tanks, you get it on the Panzer III, the Panzer IV, and the Stug III and IV, and it really starts to look the part. I'm just kind of levelling everything up now, make sure it's all in the right place before we uh, take it all off and get it ready for painting. So the last step is now everything's been lined up and sorted, I am actually going to glue the upper hole to the lower hole because there's no need for us to, to leave it separate. There's no motor in there or anything. Now here, you'll see how, well, it actually looks pretty good there, but it's not quite as straight as it's meant to be. There's one part where it doesn't quite fit up, but you can't actually see it very much. <laughs> Maybe I was being a bit harsh on myself, uh, but what we've got is a bit of, what, it's like warping, but it's not, it's sort of springing. Plastic glue's not gonna be enough to hold that unless we clamp it and it's a bit too much of a wider gap for clamping. So I'm just using a bit of super glue there just to pin that back bit down in the, at the end where it's not a perfect fit. And then that'll ensure, that'll give us the holding. It's almost using that like a clamp. Then we can use extra thin on the other side uh, to actually give us a stronger melted bond 
and the super glue will hold it there until the actual plastic glue melts it together so there we go that brings um part one to an end that's that's the build complete and in part two that will be with you next week we'll be looking and starting the painting and weathering stage so as always thanks for staying tuned um have a look in the description for ways to support the channel uh, subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video